What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you eight tips that SketchUp pros use that can help take you to the next level in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so tip number one is when you're working in a SketchUp model, you wanna make sure that you are grouping your geometry by type and then tagging the groups. And you can see right here, for example, that I've got a group of geometry that has my entourage items. So things, things like fruit on the tables and other things like that. Well, what I've done is I've taken all of that and I've put it in a group labeled entourage. Um, and so you can label your groups inside of the outliner, but then I've also taken that group and I've put a tag on it, right? So I've got a bunch of different objects in here, right? I've got fruit bowls, I've got plants, I've got other things like that. Instead of going through and tagging each one of those individually, what I've done instead is I've created a group as a container for those objects and I've tagged the group. Well, the thing about that group is now anything that I put in that group. So let's say I was to add another fruit bowl. So we'll go fruit bowl right here, as long as I drop it into this group. So let's say we wanted this kind of fancy thing right here because it's got a small amount of geometry. As long as I drop this object, wow, that's a little big. Um, as long as I drop this into that group, it's going to retain that tag, right? So whenever I turn my entourage tag on and off, everything is getting taught toggled on and off at once. The nice thing about that is I don't have to manage tagging a hundred different items. It's just whatever the container is that I've created as a group gets the tag. And then everything in that group, when I toggle it off, um, is something that I can toggle off with the tag right here. And so while we're on this topic, I get this question a lot of if we have an outliner down here, why are we using tags? And so the reason we're using tags rather than the outliner to control our visibility, so the outliner controls our organizational structure of our model, how everything is grouped and how everything is labeled, but our tags are what we're using for visibility. And the reason why is say that I wanted to create a three-dimensional view of this building and I wanted to go through and I wanted to toggle off these door swings, for example. Well, these door swings are inside of an individual door. So if I go into my door right here, each one of these doors has a swing. And so if I wanted to toggle them all off and I tried to do that using this tool right here, um, I would have to go through and do a swing off, swing off, swing off. And if you have a lot of doors that can get like really time consuming. However, what I've done instead is I have an overall group labeled doors or tagged doors. And then within each one of these, I also have the door swings on their own tag. I have the frames and the leaves on their own tag. Well, what that means is that means that I can go through and with one click on the tag, I can toggle off my door swings in the entire model, right? So I'm not just doing that on the first floor, I'm also doing that on the second floor. So if I go to my level two model right here and I look at this and I toggle the door swings, I can toggle all of those off with a single tag. So control visibilities with tags rather than with the outliner and the hide function. And so tip three is to get some help. And so what that means is that means a lot of the time going through YouTube, trying to piece together tutorials isn't always ideal. And so I've put together a course where you can go through and it's basically a start to finish. And so within the course, it'll take you through the fundamentals as well as more advanced modeling methods. So we'll talk through more advanced things you can do with your models and creating plans in layout. So this is kind of a start to finish collection of tutorials, as well as deep dives into other topics. So things like you get access to the cabinet essentials, the fundamentals of rendering, uh, the landscape and garden essentials. Um, but it's a great place to go to learn how to use SketchUp. And also it comes with support. And so what that means is that means you get access to my live calls, which happen every two weeks, they're group coaching calls, as well as my community forum where you can go to ask questions. And I provide responses by email as well. So right now I'm running a promotion which gives you lifetime access. So not only does that get you lifetime access to the training materials, but it also gives you access to lifetime support, meaning you get access to those live calls for life lifetime, the community forum for lifetime and the email support. So if you are looking for some help learning how to use SketchUp, definitely worth checking out the course. You can do that at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. That lifetime access promo ends at midnight on Black Friday. Okay. So tip four is to create 
library files. And so what that means is that means that you should create separate SketchUp files with your commonly used model so that you can bring them back into SketchUp um, in order to quickly work with them. Like for example, this is my dynamic cabinet collection, which is actually something I make available as a part of the SketchUp Essentials course, but you can create your own too. But basically I can take these and I have things like dynamic bases where I can just drop them in and just resize them in order to quickly add and move um, different cabinets inside of my model. Um, so you get access to that inside of my course, but basically what you can do is you can just pop up a second SketchUp window. You can do a control C in order to copy, and then you can hop back into your model and just drop these into your space, right? And you can bring that in. So instead of me having to remodel my cabinet bases every single time, um, I just have a library of things that I can bring back in. And so I've done the same thing for doors and windows, and these are just the ones that I use. Um, and you get access to these inside of the course, but you can create your own libraries of things that you commonly use. Just make sure just make sure that you're saving things um, in a separate library file that you can bring in in the future so that you're not remodeling the same stuff over and over again. And so a lot of the time you want a line work layer to take over into layout. I mean, obviously you do have the ability to take a section cut across your building and then go into a top down view in order to create plans, right? That's definitely something that you can do. But in addition to that, sometimes you want some actual line work and that's basically taking this object and that where the cut is actually making it into lines that you can use. And you can do that by taking a section plane right clicking, and then you're going to click on the option for create group from slice. And then I'm going to go ahead and toggle this active cutoff just so you can see this. But basically what this has done is this has gone through and it's used wherever the slice intersected with your geometry. Um, it's created line work based on that intersection, right? So you can see how now I've got things like my doors and um, my lines in here like this. Well, I can take that over into layout and I can stack that line work on top of a raster viewport in order to improve performance. I can also take this and put it on a tag. And so if I put it on like a line work tag, for example, so we'll put it on this tag right here for line work. And then once we've done that, and then once you put this on this tag, you can come in here and you can adjust what the line work is supposed to look like. So you can add things like dashes as well. So creating that line work layer gives you a lot of interesting options for your plants. And so another thing I find really helpful is the ability to isolate whatever I'm working on. Because a lot of the time, if you've got a model like this one, a lot of things can really kind of get in your way, especially if you're trying to edit things in a tighter space or something like that. First off, having everything tagged is extremely helpful, but there's another function up in your window preferences. If you go to, no, it's in window, there's another option in window model info. If you go into components right here, there's a box for hide or fade rest of model. And so if you uncheck this and you just leave it as fade rest of model, what this is going to do is when you edit a group, it's going to fade everything else in the model so you can see what, what you're editing. But there's also an option if you check this box for hide rest of model. And so what that means is that means as I go into groups, it's going to hide everything else that's in the model so I can isolate what I'm working on. Well, my tip for this is actually creating a keyboard shortcut to toggle this on and off. So if you go to window preferences and you toggle a keyboard shortcut for hide rest of model right here, I have it set to shift H. You can set it to whatever you want. You just type in the shortcut that you want in this box and click the plus button. But now what that means is that means that I can toggle this on and off by doing a shift H inside of my model right here. So whenever I want, if I want to edit my interior walls, for example, I can do a shift H and toggle on hide rest of model and I can isolate what I'm working on. Oh, and I wouldn't consider this an additional tip, but something that's very similar. I also have X-ray mode set to my X key on my keyboard so that I can see through a model. So say I've got this right here and I want to align it with something else. Well, if I toggle that X-ray mode on with the X key, notice how I can see through this and I can see a lot more inference points. So I have both Shift H and X set up as keyboard shortcuts and they save me a ton of time. Okay, next, make use of sticky geometry. So for example, I've got these cabinet doors in here. And while I do have dynamic cabinet components, I don't necessarily always need them because what you can do in SketchUp is if you remember, geometry is sticky, depending on how you set things up. What that means is that means if you move around like this, the edges 
and the faces are going to stretch in order to keep everything in the model selected, right? So if I take this face, for example, and I move it, it's going to stretch everything else based on the way that I'm moving this. Well, you can actually make use of this um, by picking up the right geometry. So on a cabinet door, for example, if I pick up all of the edges on this side, right here, and then I move this around, as long as I tap the left arrow key to lock this in a direction, notice how the way that I'm stretching this cabinet is actually not deforming the object in a way that makes it bad, right? So what that means is that means that I can select all of this geometry over here, and as I move it, it's just going to stretch in order to fit what I'm doing. Well, in this case, that's really helpful because I can just move this along the green axis right here and then say that I've got like a um, say that I've got a little bit of a reveal here on the end I can bring this back by an eighth of an inch like this but I can actually adjust heights and depths of objects without having to create a complicated dynamic component just by picking up the sticky geometry the way that I want it to go in here like this. So this is something I highly, highly recommend you play around with because it's been a game changer for me when it comes to adjusting geometry. Okay, so next up, a lot of the time when you're inside of a SketchUp model like this one, uh, this is the Cliff of Brick model from Mike Brestel, um, but a lot of the time what you want is you want to create floor plans that align. So what I want to do with this model is I want to make sure that this view right here and this view right here have the same camera location. And so notice how now they don't, right? The first one has a camera location that's a lot more centered. The second one, the camera location is not the same. Well, a lot of the time you want these to have the exact same camera view, not only if you're creating scenes of multiple floors, like what I'm doing right here, but also if you want to create the same scene, but has certain things toggled on and off, right? You might want your furniture, for example, on a lighter weight. Um, viewport than your actual walls of your model. And so the way that you can do that is whenever you want to pick a camera view up, what I'll do is I'll go to the scene that I want the camera view from first, and then I'll go to my other one, which is the one I want to change. Well, there's actually an option up in camera for previous. And if you go to previous, you're going to pick up the exact same camera location as the last view you were in. Well, in this case, the last view I was in was scene one. So now I have the same camera location. Well, now I can just right click and I can just update this. Well, now if you look at this right here, these have exactly the same camera location between the two of them. So you can use that previous in order to find a camera, assign it to a view, and then update that view. Okay, and so another thing that can be really helpful is using section fills in order to add a color fill to your walls inside of SketchUp, right? So if I take this view and I create a section across it and I go into my settings, so if I go to styles over here, so I'm in my style settings, if we go to edit, and we can adjust the section fill to something like a white color right here, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to add this white color. Then you can see how this is going to apply a section fill to this object. And so sometimes when you take a section cut across a shape like this, we'll go ahead and we'll isolate this a little bit. So sometimes when you take that section cut, it's not going to show a section fill on one of these areas. The reason why is because section fills only show up on walls that are solid or spaces that are solid. Well, in this case, if we do a little bit of investigation on this model object right here, I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this section cut off and we'll just double click in here and take a look at this. So we actually have an issue with this rear wall, which is this wall isn't filled in. Well, since this wall isn't filled in because there's a little bit of gap right here, what's happening is I'm only getting the section fill over here where these walls actually make up a solid. But if you go through and you fix that geometry, so I'm just going to fix this so that we actually have a wall in here. I'm gonna have to recut these openings real quick, which is not a big deal because uh, that geometry is already in there. I just need to remove the additional face. But notice how now that I've fixed this and this is an actual solid wall and there's actually a tag I need to toggle on just so you can see. There we go. So this is an actual solid wall now. Well, because it's a solid wall, now if I activate that section cut, 
So we want to find that section plane and we're gonna activate it. Notice how now I'm getting that full section fill in here. So if you ever get a section fill that won't fill in your model, it's because your wall isn't solid and you need to go find where the object isn't solid in order to get that fill. And notice how for things like this refrigerator, for example, I'm not getting a section fill in here for that same reason. This actually isn't a solid object, so it's not giving you that solid fill. And then a really important tip that everyone should know is a fast way to move objects between groups inside of SketchUp. Because right now, if we take a look at this, for example, I've got all my entourage items on a tag. Well, if I look at this, these books should be on that entourage tag and they're not, right? And the reason why is because they're not actually inside of the entourage group where they should be. Um, and so what a lot of people do is they'll take objects and they'll try to like cut them and then they'll try to double click into the group and then we'll try to do a control V and paste back in the group. So that is effectively moving your objects between groups, but it's also moving their location unless you happen to click on the exact location that you need in order to place that in this location, right? So I don't wanna change where these are in my model. I just wanna put them inside of the group. And you can kind of see this if you go into the outliner and you look at this, right? I've got this entourage group and I wanna move these objects into that group. So you could drag them in the outliner, but I find a faster, easier way to do this is just to select the objects that I want, do a control X, and then double click into the group that I want. So in this case, it's the entourage group and do an edit paste in place. What that does is it pastes it in the exact same location it was in before, but it's in the context of whatever group you happen to be in. So you can use this in order to cut objects, then go into a group and then paste them in place so that they're now inside of the group without changing their location. This is a huge time saver and I do it in every model like constantly to move objects between groups. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you knew about any of these tips or if you find them helpful. If you do want some additional help, you can get my course for lifetime access through the end of the week at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. That gives you access to some of the most in-depth training available for SketchUp, but also the best support between my live calls, my community forum, and my email support. Um, questions don't go unanswered in my course. I would love to have you there and help you learn how to use SketchUp. Uh, that lifetime access is going to close at midnight on Friday. So check that out if you are looking for some additional help. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.